Yo, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. My name is Trev and today we're going to go into a Marvel Rivals tier list. So let's get started. So basically I'm just going to separate this into a couple sections. Going with healers first, then tanks, then DPS. So let's get into healers. So Mantis right off the bat, right now at the current moment from all the gameplay I've seen and played myself, I think truly Mantis is probably the weakest here, uh, healer in the game so far. However, she is still manageable to put up some good numbers. The problem is everybody else in her class far outweighs all the pros and cons against Mantis. But right now, she's B tier, but she definitely has uh, the ability to increase depending on certain comps and certain uh, play styles. Next, we'll go with Rocket. Rocket's actually a very good character for, her, for himself. His revive mechanic. The amount of damage he can put out healing is basically super easy. He's a very easy character to understand. But at the current moment, though, I'm still going to put Rocket at A tier. It depends on the comp, but majority of the time, I would say out of 90% of comps, he will be there, but mostly because of his healing, uh, sorry, his revive mechanic. But everything else after that, his weakest part was definitely his amount of heals, but he, you can just spam it. It's been a couple games where I put up some crazy numbers with Rocket just by spamming his heals and doing nothing else but that. But other than that, Rocket's still a very good character. He's majority in probably all the comps again, but yeah. Next is Loki. Uh, Loki is very good. Um, even though he is a four or five star um, difficulty, he is still pretty easy to play. Once you get the once you get the technique and stuff and how to maximize uh, your heals, I, I would personally say right now Loki is probably a S tier uh, healer at the current moment. He's probably one of the best healers in the game. And there's not much to say the amount of heals you can put out like the fact that even by yourself, you throw out a crazy amount of heals, but the fact that you can go up to three Lokis and dish out that much heals is pretty ridiculous. So, even though Loki is a very difficult character to play at the beginning, his sky is the limit when it comes to his uh, skill cap. Next is Luna Snow. Luna has probably the best ultimate as a healer in the game so far. However, no, not even however. That, like, again, like her herself is ridiculous. She is herself as an S tier character. And honestly, if you're not playing Rocket, you're probably playing the Luna or you're probably playing Loki. It's like these three characters are interchangeable. But I would say at the current moment, Loki and uh, Luna are probably the best healers in the category just based on healing wise. However, when it comes to the rest of the equipment wise, I won't be. You can make an argument. Rocket can be up here as well, depending on the comp. And eventually, once people learn that you should focus on the uh, revive machine, look for it, hunt it down and stuff. That's probably like a job for like a Spider-Man or something like that. But basically, that's the healers right now. I do, like, again. Healing is actually really good at the moment. There's not really a bad choice. Even if you pick Mantis, she can dish out a good amount of heals. And don't be surprised. Like, don't sleep on a Mantis on your team. Even though she's not as good as uh, Rocket, Loki, and Luna, she still can be very good. So don't be afraid, okay? So go with tanks. Uh, I I would say tanks on themselves are a very, it's very top heavy right now at the current moment. They're not even top heavy. Like there's pretty much only good fo like four viable options at the current moment, and even then, like it really depends on your comp and what you're going for. So, at the current moment, I think right now, Penny Parker is probably the weakest tank at the current moment. She's still good. The problem is that there's just such a high skill gap when it comes to Penny. So, not a, not a lot of people have adjusted to that play style in particular. But because of how the, like the utility basis of like someone like Groot, or the flexibility of someone like Doctor Strange, he does get outclassed for the simpler hero, or the simpler tanks in that category. Next, we'll go with Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is hands down probably the definition of an A tier legend. He's not groundbreaking. He doesn't like he doesn't steal you games. Just based on his kid alone, 
but he's still very good. The problem with Doctor Strange is, uh, like, I, I wouldn't say so, like, I wouldn't say there's the, a big weakness of Doctor Strange. He's just overall really good. But there's, like, nothing that you can nerf, really, on his kit without destroying him, or actually, and if you do buff him, you could break him in the game. His portals are balanced, especially, like, late, like you can use the portal early on or you can use a late for like a late rush and that like 120 second cooldown after a while it does dissipate fast on that portal ability his basics okay his team up ability with hulk i haven't really seen in like a big factor with it i've done i've got some kills with it but it's nothing that too big but overall dr strange is still by God, he is an A tier character. He's very easy to understand and learn. But there is another one that's a bit easier that go, goes one on one with him. But I would believe he's probably a bit better. Uh, next is Magneto. Mag I've seen actually I've seen a lot of good gameplay with Magneto. I wouldn't say sleep on him just yet on his kit. However, at the current moment, because of how easy the other tanks are to play. Magneto currently is at a B tier for me. He's basically at the exact same. He's like Mantis. Depends on the comp. High skill, high skill ceiling to learn. But don't underestimate when you go in against Magneto. Like Magneto has the ability to produce a lot of good, like high, high numbers. He is very similar to uh, Sigma. Kind of like this is the Marvel Rivals version of Sigma. And he's really, still really good. Just don't sleep on him. He's just not as good as com compared to the other ones. I uh okay. So next, I'm gonna go with Groot. I know Hulk is next on that tier list down below. However, I want to go with Groot next because I have a, actually a special category for Hulk. Okay. Uh, Groot. I think Groot at the current moment is probably an S tier tank. The problem with Groot is, uh, not the problem with group. I would say maybe his walls are a bit overtuned based on health wise, but he is the easiest tank to learn. I've had success with group, and I am and tank is probably my easily my weakest category when it comes to playing. He, his walls ability, his melee is really good for the amount of range he does. His alt has a good good chance of combining with a, a different ability. It's kind of like Scarlet Witch maybe. And overall, he's just a very easy tank to learn. And there's no problem with picking Groot for the first time because you're going to put up some good numbers. Like, I would say you're. Groot is probably an easy, like, technically, because um, the amount of health and the amount of healing he does. He can put up like 8K damage pretty easily, to be honest. Okay, next. This might be controversial. And I understand if it is. But Hulk can easily be one of the best agents in the game, or sorry, heroes in the game. But he also can be the worst. It really depends on the person who's using it. He is, he's, he is borderline like Spider-Man. For me, he's at the exact same as Spider-Man, where depends on the person, he could be really good, but he could be really bad. So at the current moment, because we don't know, we don't know anything about the Hulk, I'm going to say potentially potentially his range is unlimited it just depends on the character honestly i can't pro properly rank hulk at the current moment probably because he again he's not in the meta but like i won't be surprised eventually because he is a he is one of the hardest characters to learn i believe he, he is a four he has the p potential to be unlimited because of the amount, like, for a dive comp, and especially when people get out of the Punisher, Hella, Doctor Strange, Groot, like, meta right now. Hulk, I won't be surprised if Hulk turns into one of the best heroes in the game. That the problem is I can't properly rank Hulk right now. Probably because I don't see enough people play him at the current moment. But the stuff I've seen from high-level Hulks, he makes the other tanks to run for their money. So the next category, uh, I'm going to say this right now. Uh, this I this might be a little skewed for me. I I have some problems with these. 
uh, I've already teased a bit about one of them, so I'll, I'll just go with Spider-Man. I'll start off with Spider-Man. Spider-Man has the potential to be really good, but really bad at the same time. He has a different... He has a different effect than the Hulk. Now, his dive mechanic is so good, where I think if you team up with the Hulk, where the Hulk dives in and the Spider-Man dives in at, right after, you get a one-two punch. Everybody's focused on the Hulk, but then Spider-Man can like just beat the crap out of you and surprise the shit out of you. And then get a free kill on your healers while everybody's focusing on the Hulk. That'll be an interesting future for the dive mechanics. I think there's not enough Spider-Mans. However, I do think he's a bit under uh, under uh, tunes right now. If I, if necessary, if I had the choice to put him somewhere, I would put him in B tier at the current moment. But there is a potential where if you just increase his damage just a bit with his movability, with the combos you can set up, because he is probably the easily the hardest character to learn in this game. This guy might be an S tier character. I won't be surprised in future comps and in future metas. I won't be surprised if we see a Hulk Spider-Man like comp where you people are just diving on on everybody. Kind of like maybe like a Star Lord um Star Lord Spider-Man Hulk combo. That would be pretty interesting. I won't be surprised if that would happen in the future at all. So next, uh we'll go for pretty much Go with Black Panther next. Honestly, Black Panther is probably one of the worst agents in the game so far. There is, I've seen some stuff, like some nice clips with Black Panthers, but at the current moment, he doesn't change the game. Like, you'll see that a lot in these melee characters that I'm about to rank, that they don't have the ability to change the atmosphere and change the game. His alt is pretty weak. Like, his basic is meh. Like his dash ability is like you have some potential for some nice little combos. But at the current moment, I would say he's not doing it for me. Uh we'll go with Iron Man next. Iron Man. Well, I'm gonna be honest, Iron Man sucks too. The thing with Iron Man is basically he gets countered hard by the Punisher and Star Lord. His projectiles is absolutely just way too slow and like technically it's like four hits of your projectiles i believe take out one kill however with the amount of healing in this game especially from loki and luna and rocket like you you're almost impossible it's almost impossible to get a kill with iron man especially in ranked when you have a capable healer it's his even if his right click I think if his right click uh, for his energy beam had a bit more range, I could boost it up to C tier. But the problem is his projectile uh, speed, um, his ult is it's easy to dodge pr pretty pretty easily, to be honest. And he is a fl like he, he is an airborne character, so. If you're not careful with the positioning and the movement, you're you can easily been easily be tracked down by pretty much a better agent, kind of like Star Lord and stuff, and the Punisher. Okay, let's get next into it. Uh, next character is Star Lord. Again, Star Lord. He is a noob friendly character early on, and I think his potential is all the way up at the current moment. At the current moment, I say Star Lord's probably an easy A tier. He is very similar to Doctor Strange in many ways. Where it's like he's very easy to understand how his kill works at the early on. Good Star Lord will definitely change the atmosphere of the game, unlike a good Black Panther, where I think you'll probably get more from a Star Lord than a Black Panther. So that's why I would probably put A tier. His I believe his bullets are also tracer or like hit hit scans. So that's amazing, to be honest. Um there's nothing else much to say. He is basically a very easy agent to play. So I think the only strength he has is his mobility is a bit. His mobility is a bit panned just a bit. But at the same time, a good Star Lord can make it up with it, especially if he plays with his team. However, at the same time, I haven't seen enough Star Lords at the higher rank to actually 
maybe like this might be a little generous i won't be surprised if like in future ranks where i see maybe bumping down star lord because of how his uh mobility and his rank pl or his alt works and ranked but at the current moment i would say he's a tier because he's definitely a pub stomping uh machine right now but at the same time at ranked he is definitely easy to be focus fired on next is punisher currently i would say the punisher is an s tier agent sorry himself is an a tier agent but because of rocket he makes it an s tier agent now i will say this the punisher it is better better to use the punisher with rocket and if there's no rocket on your team you you play something else you should play like a different agent learn a different agent I would I would say the Punisher is S tier when it comes to um if you have a rocket on your team. If there's no rocket on your team, he's down to B tier. So at the current moment, I will stick him in S tier at the current moment. But I don't be aware that I would I would say be aware if there's no rocket on your team, I would say pick something else. Because that Z ability is absolutely broken and it's almost, it's, I would say it's broken. Like sp spamming the shotguns on a Groot, like I would say the hardest counter to Groot right now is Punisher Z with Rocket. Like the amount of shotgun, like the shotgun on a Punisher deals so much damage and it's crazy. Okay, my next pick, uh, this might be a little controversial. Um, she is definitely a pub stomping machine. Scarlet Witch. Most tier lists will probably have Scarlet Witch at A tier. However, I'm going to probably put her maybe somewhere around C or B. I might put her in B because she has the ability. I think she does have the ability to change the game. The problem is she is a bit too predictable on how she works. That being said, she has the ability to ch like kill everybody. And surprise, surprise everybody with her ult. Uh, her move uh, mobility is very predictable. Um, her her basic is really good, I would say. But you ha the range is a little bit limited. Her alternate alternate fire is really good. I would say it's one of her most underrated abilities that is almost broken. Not broken, but I would say it's an A. Like it's above average as hell. Um, there's not much to say about Scarlet Witch, but like the thing about this is she gets hard countered by Punisher, Star Lord, Rocket himself. Like the amount of damage those agents can do. And the fact that a lot of Scarlet Witches right now are pretty predictable. I won't be surprised in the future because of the predictability of her kit. In ranked, she'll turn into a C tier character, but because she's a pub stomping machine. She's a B agent. She is the equivalent of, I would say. How, how would I say this compared to like Valorant or something? She's like Reyna. I, at the current moment, I would say she's like the equivalent to Reyna. She, Reyna. she gets her kills. She does her thing, but she doesn't overall bring a lot of good things to her team at the current moment. That's not that's what I'll say. Uh, next is Hella. Again, like she is absolutely crazy right now. Um, I might sp I might bring down S tier to A tier a bit. I might bring the Punisher down to A tier. Yeah, I will do that. Because I think uh just to balance them out, but like Hella her herself is absolutely crazy. She's probably easily like the best, even though she's not a hit scan character or and she's a projectile based character. The, f the speed amount that you launch your stuff is absolutely crazy. And it's so, it's so fast that you should be aiming her knives or whatever as a hitscan character. Like, I would say her weakest part of her kit is to alternate fire. His, her mobility is okay. I would say it's pretty average, I would say. It's not bad, but it's not good at the same time. Um... 
I don't know what else to say. Her ult is pretty easily countered, especially with a good team knowing what they're doing. I saw some cool stuff earlier where a Doctor Strange will fly up to the Hela and pull out his shield and start blocking all the incomer incoming attacks. I thought that was pretty cool. But other than that, Hela's primary fire is probably her best part of her kit. And if there's a good Hela on the other team, just watch out. Like, there's almost no chance or almost nothing you can do. Like right now, to current moments, it's hella Punisher for a reason, for a, re a reason, for different reasons. Like Punisher will do vast amount of damage on um, tanks and on the attackers, while Hella will snipe you across maps and stuff, and like really finish off characters. I want like Punisher might deal the most amount of damage. Like he'll put up like 30k maybe in damage, but Hella will probably have more eliminations by the end of it than Punisher. Uh, Magic herself, Magic's, I would say Magic's a pretty okay character. I would say the only problem is with Magic is her survivability is not that good. Even though her kit is, how, about, how would I say this? Her kit involves her regaining a lot of health after she gets a hit. I just feel like once you see a Magic, you just focus down on her and she's instantly eliminated. There's like... There's not a lot of survivability. 1v1, if, if it's a 1v1 game, she's S here. Like, hands down, she's probably the either the best or the second best agent when it comes to 1v1s. But this is a 6v6 game, and the amount of 1v1s you go into, there's not a lot. So, I'd say at the current moment, Magic will probably be in C tier for me. He's not amazing but she has the there if she gets just a time like some buffs in there she can easily be one of those frontline uh damage dealers that can easily hold her own in a fight against tanks and stuff so i won't be surprised if she gets some fine tunes about her damage and her, the health that she gains back i would say magic is someone you definitely want to look out for in the future i would say okay so next I would say, uh, well, next is Storm. Storm herself is very interesting, I would say. She has potential to be really good. She's definitely better than Iron Man. Her, her kit herself, definitely better than Iron Man. The problem is she has the exact same weakness as Iron Man does. It's just her abilities are just a bit better. So it's very easily to focus fire down on her. The problem is it, she's easy to focus fire upon her, but her kind of boot, uh, Lucio abilities are pretty unique, speeding up and flying damage on your team. Her alt is pretty good, I would say. The problem is she's very easily countered against like a Punisher and Hella. Like if there's a Punisher and Hella on the other team, like. Your storm is good as dead, pretty much. Like, there's no point of playing storm if there's like a Punisher or Hella on the other team. That's not the unfortunate. Now, next is Namor. I would say Namor is just a weaker Hella. Like, Namor, Namor himself, Namor himself is okay. The problem is Namor suffers from just not being Hella. Like if you if you want to play Namor, just play Hella. Like Namor has the exact same primary fire as Hella, just Hella's uh, knives go a lot faster, and so the amount of rapid fire damage you can do with Hella is a lot more than you can do with. Um, I would say. However, I you can. Easily make an argument for either C or B. I would probably put them at C because of the Hella factor, but I won't be surprised. And even at his alt, his alt's not like I swear I don't get any damage going with his alt. I think if there's you make the alt wider, you could keep the exact same. Uh, I would say how do I explain it? Keep the exact same amount of radiant or is it circumference when it comes to his kill zone maybe ability but the outer part of the ring i would say maybe like turn it into a like a knockback ability where 
you temporarily stun anybody that's caught in the outer part of the circle. I think that would be a good, actually a very good buff, especially for him, because I would say it's almost imp you can't kill the whale, and his alt would make Hello run for his money. I think if you adjust it like that, there's already a knockback mechanic when it comes to um his outer radius. And the problem is, I think the radius is just too small, but that's just my opinion, to be honest. So basically, I that's it for my tier list. I don't think that's that bad of a tier list. I think maybe if I you can make, I would say between the two healers, I would maybe say Luna is a bit better than Loki, but like Loki's so good at the same time. I, these two are di good for different reasons, unfortunately. So I don't think the problem is like Rocket makes. Is just as like is a must when it comes to the comps too, but I wouldn't say even Rocket's broken at all. I think right now healers are at a good spot. It's just Mantis is left out probably because of the compositions right now. But I won't be surprised in the future Mantis gets buffed. A couple of possibilities. I would I would be surprised if Penny maybe gets those tiny bit of buffs or something, and she'll become meta in the future. Again, she's a very good character. Magic's good. Problem is again her mobility and her survivability. I think is a real question mark when it comes to her play, and I won't be surprised if Magneto also gets maybe a little bit temporarily reworked or changed in the future, because it is very easy. Like I won't be surprised if Magneto becomes a very good uh, tank option in the future, if there's any nerfs or uh, uh, yeah any nerfs. To uh, Groot or Doctor Strange, because I think Groot is way too easy to use right now, and I think you can maybe uh, I think you can nerf a uh, Groot by just tweaking the damage on his walls, just like decreasing the health just a tiny bit. Because if you then if you don't, his walls are basically it. The walls themselves right now are very hard to destroy, but. That's just me. So that's it for my tier list, everybody. That's basically my thoughts. I basically just rambled on for the last couple of minutes at the end. But if you stay tuned for the very end, I will say this. Uh, Marvel Rivals is a very good game. By themselves, don't take tier list, tier list too seriously. And any of these guys are good options. Like you guys. Like, again, there's been a couple of games where I popped off with Iron Man, even though I do think Iron Man is probably one of the weaker agents in the game. Uh, I've had no luck with <laughs> uh, Black Panther, unfortunately, but that's just me. I, 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 myself, I'm not the best when it comes to melee characters. I'll agree with that. But what I've seen from other people, what I've seen and heard from other people, like I'll, what I've noticed is a lot of the melee characters are weakened, are a little bit weak. However, except for the Hulk, Hulk and Spider Man have huge amount of potential when it comes to skill wise i know it's a little cop out but i would say spider-man's a b character right now when the hulk has the ability to be s plus depends on the comp however it also depends on the person i've only seen like the best of the best hulks are top tier and they are a pain in the ass kill so that's it for my video everybody stay tuned for more on your way i'll be live streaming i believe today and keep on rocking hopefully we'll see you guys pretty much playing marvel rivals in the future again this game is fun if you have not played this game do yourself a favor check this out when it comes out this is subject to change though just to let you know this is subject to change because this is an alpha tier list but uh it could be a lot different when it, when it comes to future okay so see you next time everybody